Welcome to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Long. With me, we have Executive Director with the Port of Morgan City, Mac Wade. As always, love having you here, and it's time to get right into it. Um, something I want to start off with, it's springtime. And anytime we think about springtime, we think about high water season. We haven't had it in quite some time, but we're starting to see a little bit of a, uh, a change in that with the water really rising now. Danica, that is, it is true. We, we've been very fortunate. We didn't have high water back during the winter time. Uh, water levels were below normal, but we have had some rain in the south region, but we've also had a lot of rain up in the uh, Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Uh, and we knew this was kind of coming because they had lots of rain and we knew it was about two weeks away. Mississippi River's up a little bit, not nothing to panic about, but it is up. The Chafalaya is up. Uh, we've had some rains last weekend. We had a tremendous amount of rain on Monday. That all fell down in this area. Yeah. Uh, it is going to affect, it is affecting the river. The river is probably going to about five foot, could go a little bit higher. The, in a, anything above four foot restrictions have to come in, in place. The Coast Guard's already got restrictions in place on the river for the towing traffic. And typically, we close the gates in Morgan City and Berwick around what was the gauge for that? Uh, there some gates could start being closed as far as it's six foot, seven foot, mm -hmm. uh, only a few. Mm -hmm. But six, seven foot, there'd definitely be a few gates closed. They're not anticipating that, but we are anticipating could go maybe in, in the mid five foot range. Yeah, right. So, but in, in but it's going to go back down. Mm -hmm. It's going to That's go right. back down. Uh, it's, it's a little weird because I think around this time, was it maybe last year, it was kind of flipped. We were seeing low water, um, especially in, in, along the Mississippi River. Drought. Yeah, that drought, drought. really affected yeah. us. And here exactly. we are, we've got an abundance of yeah. water. Yep. I yep. mean, just for those folks who are trying to, you know, wander in and just give you a little bit of a lesson, um, that water, you're talking about if it, what happens in the Midwest where it comes on down, you know, the Mississippi River um, goes all the way up. So it just kind of feeds down and we're at the bottom in that little pocket and it just comes down, it drains into us. Yes. So that's why we're you know, experiencing high water. So exactly. I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a quick lesson when it comes to that for those folks who don't know. Um, also, speaking of that, the winters weren't that bad. So usually we'll see if winters, when, when all that snow starts to to melt, right. we get that as well. But we haven't had that. So it's just really just from the rains it, alone. This is from the rains. I mean, a little bit, all the snow's gone now. And, and it could, it's, it's basically for the, for the rains that we have had. And now, the only thing with this high water, we do get a little sediment. Water's not extremely high, but this water is not real clean coming down. It's got a lot of sand mm -hmm. and silts and clays, which causes us problems. Mm -hmm. So we know we'll have, a, have some dredging we'll have to do, not to the extent we've had when we've had tremendously high water, but any, any type of sediment that falls out, we got to pick it up and move it and make make land with it. Now, now, speaking of dredging, I mean, at one time we were running at least four dredges at one time. So unheard of for our area. Uh, we don't get that kind of money. But lately, past couple of years, we've been rolling in dough <laughs> and Danica, rolling out the silt. <laughs> at one time this year, we had six dredges running. Uh, six. We yeah, didn't get six. six dredges in six years, but six dredges running. We had a, uh, uh, we're down to one. Well, you must have lost your money. No, we spent, we have spent over a hundred million dollars on this channel in the last two years dredging it. Our channel is in fantastic shape. It is the best it's ever been in. I've been around a long time. We are 20 foot all the way to the sea, but we were really 20 foot plus. Uh, we like to say we got blue water. When you look at the surveys from the core, mm -hmm. it shows blue. Water's not blue down here. Well, right. But on yeah. the <laughs> charts, it shows right. blue water. Uh, and it shows that width, and it shows, I'm sure, yes, there's the indicators the of showing yes. the depth. Yes, all the yes. way up Bayou Buff, all the way into Bayou Black. We have got good water. Uh, we are, like I say, one dredge working right now. That's our friends, Bryce, the, ha yes. the agitation dredge. They're continuing to work because that's the bar channel. That has to be worked every day, yes. every night, every week. Uh, so they're out there handling that for us. 
That's why we've got such a good channel right now. Yes, and um, I, I love the fact that it's keeping keeping things rolling and yes. it's keeping uh, these boats coming in, also going out, and that means cha-ching, cha-ching. That means we're going to be welcoming in hopefully some new businesses. And I know mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that in a minute, especially about the businesses that are thriving right now. Yes. Uh, we had a couple of special visitors to come in and also a really big business that is likely to come because of our waterway doing so well. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back. My guest is Executive Director of the Port of Morgan City, Mac Wade. And again, as I like to do always, give the folks an update as to what's going on in our waterways because it is important. Um, we, we see that, you know, oil and gas has had its, had its moments, but, you know, I've always just been a proponent of let's use all of our resources, particularly our waterway. They are an asset to us. And so, we would love to see more businesses use the waterway. And uh, we, when we talked about it, he said, well, you're in luck. There's, a, there's possibly one really big uh, company that could be coming in and actually uh, docking at the, the port. The, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, well, I mentioned that our channel was open, how much money has been spent. You know, this money is the taxpayer's money. And when Congress is giving it out, they, uh, they want to make sure they're giving it where the taxpayers are getting a return on their investment. All this money we have been receiving and it's taken in over the last two year period, our channel is in great shape. Uh, and there's lots of business going on in this area and it's all located on the water. Why? Because we've got the draft. They can get out, get in without any problems. And Danica, about a year, and we've been hoping to get a ship in. You know, years ago we had Lando Lakes. Remember all that? Yes. And it was great. It was it lasted six months. The reason that lasted, the channel filled in. I didn't get the dredging money, so they left. We have got uh, an opportunity, and this company's been working on it. It's called Cats, C-A-T-S. CATS is a, uh, it's, it's the Cuban American Transportation Service. And there's a lot of business going on between, not, I'm not going to say a lot of business. Uh, there's about a little over $500 million a year that the U.S. government does with Cuba. I didn't think there was anything done between uh, Cuba and America. Right. Or uh, Cuba coming to America. Uh, but they are important. There's humanitarian goods, there's food products going down, that is allowed to go to Cuba. Cuba can't sit, ship nothing back. Right, okay, and are, are they uh, shipping this through like containers? They're gonna be shipping so. in containers. They contacted us, we had the Cuban ambassador down, which was not really publicized, but we had the Cuban ambassador down last summer on our dock. They came to visit uh, Morgan City, I know they met with the mayor, uh, when was that? When did they come down? Last summer. Last summer. About last okay. June or July. Okay. Uh, they came in and they we were our dock was under construction at the say, time. I was going to say, yeah, had they been and here the, just last the, month, the, we'll talk yeah, about that. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So they came down and, yeah, they'd like to use the port, and we, we said, oh, we'd love for you to use us. But they, when I tell you we had to go through a lot of red tape in Washington, Cuban America, they ain't all really speaking terms, all kind of issues. We had to get our congressman to help us to get us through some of the stuff with the State Department. Then you had stuff on the other end on the Cuban side. But it sounds to me this company, CATS, has got everything lined up and they're going to start doing containers. They can put 80 containers on, on this boat they have and they're going to be chartering. Uh, it's 80 containers. You say, well, Mac, that's not a lot. We're not, we, we're not, we can't take the big container ships in that carry 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 in some cases. But there's a niche in the market to bring small stuff. Right now there's a company shipping a lot of stuff out of uh, Jacksonville going into uh, Cuba every day. This company's planning on maybe coming in about every 10 days with the ship to load containers out. So okay. we welcome that opportunity yes. to bring some business, create some jobs, but once again, 
it's going to be on the waterway using that channel that the American taxpayers got open for us. Gotcha. Good. And how soon do we expect cats to move in? We, we are looking at maybe next month sometime. There's a good chance in, in okay. June they're going to be uh, coming in. All right. Just in time. That's good. Well, I've got to save my next question uh, for when we come back. And we kind of alluded to it a little bit. And we're talking about the port expansion project that's going on and where you are in what the, what's the status of that project. Right. And also monies that we're, um, we've been awarded. So come on back. We've got much more to cover right here on The Voice of the Coast. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Let's get right back into it with Mac Wade. Um, we talked about uh, the port expansion project. Uh, so it's two two components to it because you have the east side and you have the west right. side. And uh, the last time you had come, we kind of talked about where you were with the, the east side and all the money that we had gotten to take care of this project. We got a lot of federal funds, I believe. Federal got some state, state funds yes. and yes. some did we, grant monies for this as well. A and lot of grant some money. Matching, matching yep. funds, yep. right? Yep. So I guess at this point, uh, we're a month behind, but proud to announce that it is complete, the, the east side, the east dock. The east dock was completed. We got substantial completion with the state last month uh, in April. Uh, that was about a six and a half million dollar project. We are through with it. Uh, and that's where we hopefully that cats will be coming in with their ship in the next, uh, you know, several weeks and everything to mm -hmm. load out. And from there, now it's on to the West Dock. The West Dock has been in the plans, permitting stage. We've been, we're going through all the engineering. Been going through that for over a year. Takes a lot of work, a lot of work. $30 million investment mm -hmm. in, the, in Morgan City, in the port, in the district. $30 million. So we know the east, uh, the east side yes. uh, will obviously house boats right um, what is the west uh, the west port side, you know? okay the east dock right now is 800 foot long six and a half million dollar investment 800 foot long we are going to add 1100 foot to that 800 foot we purchased land a couple years back and this has been in the work for two to three years because it takes time you've got to get the money lined mm -hmm. up I, I do I, I always the cash flow everything projections I can't start it for another two years because it would take, take me that long to get the money that the feds or the states promised me. Mm -hmm. So in that, right now, the West Dock, we hope to go to bid by late summer, and I'm hoping construction's going to start uh, in the fall of 24, and we should be through with, the, with that project by the, by the fall of uh, 26, about a two-year project. Okay. Huge. Yeah. $30 million, Mayrad, federal government program, gave us $10 million, no match. Uh, we've got capital outlay money from the state. Uh, we've got $2 million from, from uh, capital outlay with the state, no match. Port priority funding, we have $15 million from the port priority funding. Uh, we have like a 10% match. Uh, we so have, just so you know, when, when you're saying no match or 10%, oh, that means that's what the port has right. to match only 10%. Or right. well, you have no matching no. funds, that which is good. Oh, you I just, like that. I, yeah, I, I, I like, I I like gotta, free, I don't have free to, money. I don't got to put no money up at all, and you're <laughs> no. just going to give it to me? That, we, that's a true grant to me. We have been very, very <laughs> fortunate. Danica, right now, and we're looking at, we've got other projects we're doing. We have been, a, we've got six federal projects in hand that we have been awarded. Mm -hmm. And it's not Mac Wade just saying this. It's in the federal registry. It shows you uh, what states. We just got one this week, uh, an earmark for the state of Louisiana. We're the only ones in the state of Louisiana that got it. They got all 50 different states, but the only one that got this earmark. Yeah. Uh, when we got the Mayrad earmark, we were the only uh, entity in Louisiana that got the 10, we got $10 million. New Orleans didn't get anything, Baton Rouge, no other port got anything. Mm -hmm. We were the only one. So we've been very, very, I like to say, fortunate and blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, and I like to think that, yes, we are blessed, definitely. Yes. But we're in a very, um, I guess, optimal location um, because, and make sure I'm telling, I'm saying this correctly, because our location, we are near the, what are the two major areas uh, for, for traveling on the water? What those uh, bodies of water? We're well, close you, to the Gulf. Real right? close to the Gulf. And you've um, got the GIWW. GIWW, right. Runs east and west. Which is the and intercoastal. And you also got it running north. Exactly. So we're in a really Very good location. Position. And that's why I think that the feds, <laughs> the people yeah. holding the money, they're now seeing the potential, and we're seeing that potential really, you know, uh, you know, into fruition and yep. where it is and, yep. and what's going on. So I think we're doing great. We're going to come on back and talk a little bit more uh, with the Port Executive Director, Mac Wade. <laughs> Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Now let's talk about this. Here's a, a an education moment I'd like to, to to tell folks. And one of the reasons why we're able to get all this money we're talking about, I had to learn that while we may be located, while we're in the boat, right, we're located in Assumption Parish. However, the waterway belongs to St. Mary Parish. That blows my mind. I'm not questioning it because any way that we can benefit from it and continue to get that money in, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know know that. That's you know I don't know if that's really public knowledge. You, the nigga, and, and, and it's a good point. Uh, you know a lot of people say the Port of Morgan City. Well, you're in Morgan City. Well, Macomb is not not the Port of Morgan City. Yes, it is. It's in our jurisdiction. And our jurisdiction said, well, buy you buy you buff. Oh, that's assumption. Mm -hmm. That's not yours. No, you're right. Where the, where the stuff's being put together, but the minute they they put they construct this and they set it on that barge, the waterway is the Port of Morgan City. Yeah. The snake pit out there is yeah. part of it. And you know, the next parish over, Terrebonne comes in. Bayou Black's Terrebonne. All the water in Bayou Black when Avondale was here years ago. Mm -hmm. That's part of the federally authorized channel, just like Bayou Buff, Port of Morgan City. I've got, there's three parishes. I got Morgan City, we got Assumption, we got Terrebonne. The waterway. Don't have any land in Assumption, don't have any land in Terrebonne. And guess what? They're not transporting that stuff by land. No. They're transporting no. it by water. Water. So. And the waterway is where we get credit. That's why they saying, we got to keep this open. These businesses wouldn't be able to do this. They wouldn't be able to build stuff for the nation's defense. Which is why it was so uh, so nice to have the Colonel, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, the Colonel came down, the yes. Congressman Clay Higgins. And so now with their own eyes, they're like, oh, now I see where this money's going. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it, keep it going. I see that we're kind of getting a return on our investment. So we may have spent out or dished out $100 million dollars for you know, over how many years? For the last two years. Two That's years. A lot of money. However, the contracts that are being worked on, or one contract two might years. be worth just that. And a lot of these contracts are with a lot of the military yes. um, branches that are here. The defense fund. I mean, defense. Uh, what is it? Defense contractors. contractors yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Um, you have Navy. Uh, you have Army stuff going Army, on. Yes. You have you have they're building uh, Bollinger's building dry docks for the nuclear submarine program. Well, Mac, they ain't got no submarines around here. No, they don't, but they have them up on the East Coast. But the dry docks, massive, mm -hmm. biggest dry docks I've ever seen are being built here. The LNG stuff is going on here. Venture Global Assumption has over about 20, over 2,400 employees working every day, seven days a week out, out there. Uh, but they're building all that stuff and putting it on our waterways. Mm -hmm. I claim, the port claims credit because you're using our waterways. I can't claim credit, we claim credit for your success because if without your waterway, you wouldn't be here, there would be no need. So it's the waterway, the waterway. And Daniki, you've preached that, I have too for years. Finally, it feels good to have it open. It's been open. I've got funding in place, already got next year's money. Oof. We've already got the year after's money. Come on. The, and the core understands with all this going on, if we wouldn't have had anything, they look around and say, well, you're not doing anything. Sorry, you're not getting no more money. This place is booming. 
That's all, how you, our fa all our fabrication yards. That are is busy. how you Backlogs. secure the bag, as the, as the kids say. That's you got to secure the bag and secure it early. That's so right. we are not only taking care of 24, 25. I think you even said 26? 26, yes. Come on. Yes. And I'm yes. going to tell you, when I first got started, we were doing news and we, you know, learning more about the port and how you guys were running short of funds and oh. not even able to take care of next year. And so we this is, take we're next leaps, day. yeah, we are leaps and bounds from where we were yes. some years ago. But thank you so much. You know, that's the time. It has already gone by so quickly. So that means got to come back not too long uh, of an absence. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time.